In this episode, Formula One drama in Brazil. The WEC wraps up the season in Bahrain, and Porsche Penske finalizes their driver lineup. Welcome to episode 138 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rao, there was some racing over the weekend. There was, yes. There's not much racing left in the year, but there was some good racing this weekend. Very true. And did you happen to see any of it? I did not actually get to see the F1 Grand Prix. Saw some highlights from some other races. Well, let's talk about F1 first. Yeah, let's get into some F1 because there was some drama. I like hot drama in the racing world. There was actually a lot of hot drama. <laughs> what did I miss out on? So let's talk about this F1 Sao Paulo Grand Prix from mm-hmm. Brazil. What was on the line for this race? <clears throat> Nothing. Well, second place. Constructors' Championship for Ferrari and Mercedes? Y- yeah. The, the season's done. Right. For Red Bull winner. has won. We're looking for the first loser at this point. All right. Yes. So, Sao Paulo. It was one of those uh, sprint race qualifying races. That's right. Mm-hmm. I remember now. Uh, I saw the posts. Hmm. I saw everybody losing their mind about who took pole on Friday. Who took the first pole. <laughs> right. Because, because then you have the sprint race pole. What is qualifying? Which pole is pole? <laughs> oh, my God. What is qualifying? I know. Who's on pole? <laughs> so let's talk about the first qualifying before the qualifying race, before the race. Qualifying before the sprint race, which sets the grid for the real race. Correct, yes. Okay. So in qualifying, uh, the entire field fell into a Haas sandwich. Whoa. What? Yep. Huh. The entire field was bookended by a Haas. So there was a Haas in last place and a Haas in first place? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you had Kevin Magnuson... <laughs> Took pole for the first time in his entire life. Wow. And then you had Mick Schumacher, which took 20th place. Oh. <laughs> the highs and lows of that team. Wow. What, what are you? I'm a Haas sandwich. That's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I will say K-Mag looked super excited. Yeah. He took pole. Yeah. But how did he get pole? Because he was quick. No. Did you see what happened? No. Oh. Uh, he went out, and it was a situation where in the beginning of the session, everybody went out and did their like first laps. And as they were doing their first lap, it started raining. Mm. So the track instantly got slower. And he happened to have the fastest lap in the first, like, you know how in two, the yeah. first two minutes they get a lap out. And then they come back in and they wait for like, I don't know, a couple more minutes, refuel the car. Then they go back out for their final run. Mm-hmm. He got that first lap in, in the best track conditions possible, and he got pulled. Ah, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm. So there was a moment in time where they came on the radio to him, and they said, or I think he came on the radio to the team, and he said, hey, guys, what position am I in? Unknowing any of this. Yeah. And they said, Kevin, you're P1. <laughs> and he went, what? Huh? huh? What? What? Huh? No. I don't know what I'm feeling. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling all the tingly things. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. He didn't know how to react. It was awesome. It was so cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I, lo- I love that. I love yep. to see. I like Magnuson, too. Mm-hmm. I do. I like him. Um, but, yeah, he took pole for the sprint race, which was awesome. Uh, but then in the sprint race, you did have a pretty solid battle between Russell and Verstappen. Mm-hmm which led to Russell taking the win at the sprint race, which I think for some reason I saw the, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I feel like I saw Verstappen took mediums and everyone else took softs for the sprint. I'm not sure. I didn't happen to see. Like what? Why? I don't know. What is Bonotto now or is Horner now moonlighting and, Playing the guys of Bonotto? I don't 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 get it. (laughs) Either way. But Russell took the win in the sprint race, which led Russell to take the pole on the actual race, which, again, who gets pole? I I don't know. I'm hoping it's Kevin Magnuson just for the record. But uh, throughout the race, there was quite a bit of excitement, actually. 
Yes, lots of highlights. So throughout the first dramatic start, there was a bunch of touches. Ricardo uh, Ricardo bumped Magnussen and pretty much ruined his race. Uh, we had, I don't think he completely ruined, but not not brilliant. No, I'm pretty uh, sure that they, they were both out after that. I think you might be right, yeah. I know Ricardo was toast. Uh, Verstappen and Hamilton, they touched a little bit here. Uh, because of Verstappen's touch on Hamilton, Verstappen was given out a five-second penalty. Okay. But if you're that team, five it seconds is nothing. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, yeah, there's some more touches. Lando Norris and Charlotte Claire, they touched. Uh, and then let's talk about the hot drama. I heard that there was some drama in the Red Bull camp. Ho! Oh. I don't know what happened oh. or what the drama is about. Ho, ho. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. So throughout the race, uh, Verstappen and Perez. Uh, Verstappen was in, I think it was sixth, and Perez was in seventh. Verstappen's already won the season, right? Mm-hmm. We know this. Yep. Done deal. So Red Bull boss Christian Horner comes on the radio and tells Verstappen, give way. Perez needs the points. Uh, it was a team call. Yep, team call. And what happened was Verstappen said no, mm. which means Perez and Leclerc come out of this race dead even in points, mm. literally exactly even. If if Verstappen would have done as he was told and would have given the position to Perez, then Jacko would have been higher up in the rankings than Leclerc after okay. this race. Now, Verstappen said that he denied and refused the team order because of, quote, he had his reasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we talk about the rumor mill of what the reasons are? Sure. Okay. So the rumor mill has been stirring and spinning around about what his reasons are. And they've actually, Perez and, Ham, and uh, Verstappen have both been quoted pretty much digging at each other at this point. Ooh. That Perez said something to the effect of, after all I've done for him, he wouldn't do this. And Verstappen just kind of ignored and said, well, I had my reasons. Right? Mm. Apparently, the rumor mill is stating reasons dating back to Monaco. To Monaco. Mm-hmm. What happened in Monaco? I didn't remember this happening, so I had to do a little bit of digging. Okay. I put my uh, my sleuth detective eyeglasses on, and I went all Sherlock Holmes here. So, apparently, back in Monaco, Perez deliberately ruined Verstappen's qualifying when Perez crashed in Q3. Oh, ah. I do remember that now. Eee. That's right. Ah. And I, I actually went back and I watched the video of Perez's qualifying in Monaco to try to see, could it have been intentional or unintentional? I don't know if it was intentional. Well, hold on. So I was watching and listening to the audio of when Perez would be going on throttle on the exit of the corner in Monaco. Right. It was going toward the tunnel, wasn't it? It was like the last corner before the tunnel. Yes. Yep. And the lap that Perez crashed was dr- sounded drastically different in the apex of that corner. Okay. It sounded like Perez stabbed the throttle like mid-apex. To spin the car. Yeah. Because I remember it was not a big incident. He like nope. doinked the front wing or something, like barely. It was just enough of an incident to really piss him off. To, to get out the red flag, to stop the session, mm-hmm. to, to ruin, in theory, Verstappen's event. Huh. Now, qualifying at that track at um, Monaco. Monaco is a big deal because you can barely pass at Monaco. Because if you qualify first, your chance of winning is way up there. It's almost 90%. It's ridiculous mm-hmm. at that track. Um, so I can see how he's pissed, but is this the correct time to take out your anger? No. Yeah. Yeah. From Verstappen's position, it's not a bad time because he's not in a championship fight. Yeah, he doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. But 
from Perez's perspective. Hmm. But I will hmm. say this definitely tarnishes Verstappen's reputation. You think so? Yeah. Really? I think so. I think if I'm, I I don't know. I just. Eesh. Hmm. I don't. I I don't know. I because when Verstappen was approached with the question of is this because of Monaco. He just kind of declined to comment and say, oh, no, he didn't decline. He just kind of said something to the effect of, you can draw your own conclusions or whatever you want. Keep it really vague. Mm hmm. Hmm. Apparently, they've both said that they've shook hands and they can get on to Abu Dhabi as grown ups. They have to say that. I don't believe they will. I don't believe they will either, but I would love to see some shenanigans. What would be really funny is to watch Hamilton take out Verstappen in Abu Dhabi. Because Hamilton's oh. nowhere near it. No, he's not. He's, he's way down the list. That would be the revenge of the year. From last year. The revenge of, yes, the decade. Right. That'd be good. That would be hilarious. Mm. Yeah, so that's the hot drama. Now, do you have the results from who I, won? I, I do. Okay. If I recall... Uh, it was not Red Bull. It wasn't. And I don't think that they were even on the podium. Not even close. Okay. Who, who, what was the podium? Okay. So I'm going to tell you right now, the podium included some Mercedes and a Ferrari. All right. But the top step was not given to who you might think it would be given to. Was it? It was Russell. Really? George Russell won in Brazil. Good for him. And now he started the race first because he yep. won the sprint race. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he but passed there was Verstappen. Some, some, some jolting. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a clean win. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So it was Russell, Hamilton, Sainz, which was a great comeback for Sainz and then Leclerc because Leclerc got bumped with, I think it was Norris earlier, like I said. Um, and uh, yeah, that's... It, it it led to Russell getting his first ever win. Yeah, that is his first. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, awesome. Which means, more specifically, you know who is still winless? Lewis Hamilton. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. wow. There is one wow. race left in the season, and Hamilton is still winless. What if I had told you that in the beginning of the season? I would have thought you were full of shit. I would have bet somebody everything I had that oh. Lewis would have won. At a least race. a race. Yeah. That's I would have literally bet $1,000. Yeah. That is crazy. Yes. So Hamilton still has not won a race. It was Russell, Hamilton, Sainz, Leclerc, Alonso in fifth. Out of boy. Verstappen, Perez, Ocon, Botas, and Lance Stroll rounding out the top ten. So as this season has ended, I don't know if this is... Uh, a symptom of Red Bull being done with the championship and not doing anything else to the car. But the gap from Mercedes to Red Bull specifically has definitely gotten way more narrow over these last few races. You're right. I don't know why. Well, like I said, I suspect it's a symptom of them being done with the championship fight. Yeah, I just I, I don't know why they've completely let it go that much. But they're still in the battle for Perez, but only Perez. They have the, the constructors locked up. Yes, but what they've just shown is they don't give two shits about Perez, the Mexican minister of defense. <laughs> True. Uh, well, at least Verstappen doesn't. I will be very curious to see what Christian Horner does because he's who really runs, stuck. Who technically runs the team? Horner? But who actually runs the team? Uh, Verstappen. Yeah. I mean... To a certain extent, yes, the driver has a ton of leverage over the rest of the team. He's the one pointing the car in the direction and stepping on the pedal. He's also the last season championship and this season championship. Right, mm. which is huge for them. Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, so Brazil was a bit dramatic. All right, good. That's honestly what they need for the mm -hmm. last few races. For sure. Uh, but that uh, I guess that really kind of wraps up our talk about F1. It does. There's one race remaining, right? Uno. We'll get to that in a bit. All right. Cool. But for now, let's move on to another race that happened this past weekend. Okay. Did you watch any of it? Uh, this was the WEC event, yes. right? The WEC. And where were they at? Bahrain. Bahrain. Which unfortunately did wrap up the season for the WEC. Yes, it did. 
Yeah. Uh, I didn't see the actual race live, but I saw some highlights. I saw about the first 10 to 15 minutes live, and then I saw the last 10 minutes live. And then the rest of it I listened to in the car via Radio Le Mans. Oh, yeah. The best broadcast. Yeah, boy. So in that first 10 minutes that you watched, did you watch a Ferrari and a Porsche battle it out? A little bit. Ah, that seemed to be the theme of this event, mm-hmm. which yep. was actually fantastic to watch. It was, yes, it, it was. I'm sad about what actually happened, but the the was. result was not for you. But that's okay because the racing was really good. Yeah, it was awesome to see those two battle it out. And I think that there's now some bad blood between Ferrari and Porsche in the WEC. Mm, yes, because I remember what track was it. Um, there was a Ferrari and Porsche that were smacking into each other under braking earlier in the season. Do you recall? Uh, don't believe that was this season. That was Bahrain last season. Was that Bahrain last season? Yeah. That was also, that was a bit aggressive. Yeah, what that was was the six hours at Bahrain. That's right. Because they did that in lieu of, was it Fuji? I think so. Yeah. And I remember. So last year they went, Six-hour Bahrain, and then eight-hour Bahrain. That's what it was. So I believe that was last year at the first or the second Bahrain. Which was the the last season, but I think this year kind of situation, correct? Yeah, I think you're actually right. So it wasn't that long ago. Right. That we had Ferrari and Porsche battling at Bahrain. Yes. Why does this keep happening here? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you why. Because Ferrari and Porsche have been the top two teams in GTE Pro true, for a long time. Because GTE Pro is kind of dwindled away to, well, nothing, frankly. There's a Corvette, and that's, I think, it. No, no. Oh, there's an Aston. Uh, but yeah, there's an Aston, and there was a Corvette in this race. And that's it. Y- yes. Yikes. All right. Yeah. So it's always down to Ferrari and Porsche because hmm. it's just what it is, right? Now, in w- what were the results in the, the GT class? We'll come around to the top class in a moment okay. here. So GT class racing at the BAPCO, eight hours of Bahrain for 2022. You had the win going to the Ferrari 488 driven by Miguel Molina and Antonio Fuoco. And then you had the Chevy Corvette C8R piloted by Mr. Tommy Milner and Mr. Nick Tandy. Then you had some Porsche boys. You had the number 92 Porsche 911 RSR, driven by Michael Christensen and then Kevin Estra, and then followed up by the number 91 Porsche 911 RSR, driven by Jean-Marie Bruni and Richard Leitz, followed by the last Ferrari of Alessandro Pierre Guidi and James Collado. And that is pretty well rounding out the LMGTE pros. Now, I believe that the Ferrari of Perguidi and uh, James Collado was the one that won the championship. Am I correct in that? Uh, I will tell you. I'm pretty darn sure that that's what happened. And I think that it was a series of unfortunate events for Porsche to have <clears throat> the championship end in the way that it did. Yeah, it was Perguidi and Collado. Okay. Yep. The way that that played out, was fascinating to watch in the race um, because the other Ferrari, I believe, took the win and that removed enough points from the Porsche for them to take the loss in the championship. Correct. So it was a team play for Ferrari to get the win this year. Yep. Which I like watching. I know you hate because it went against your car, but it was cool to watch. Yeah, as a fan, I wasn't a huge fan of that. But I do remember, I think, one of the Porsches and one of the Ferraris. I think it was... The Porsche with, I don't remember which one it was. I think it was the number 91 with Richard Leitz and the Ferrari that didn't win, the number 51 with James Collado and Alessandro Pierguidi. I believe they were both struggling on gas on like the very last lap. Mm-hmm. So they uh, ended up not doing so well. Uh, yes. But yeah, it was a Ferrari, a Corvette, and then a Porsche in the GT Pros. That's All a right. great picture we're looking at. Yeah, these are some awesome photos from motorsports images. Yeah, and which is sad because this is the last year of LMGTE Pro. Yes, it is. It's gone. Goodbye. Je, je fini. 
there's not enough cars to have another year of it anyway so that's fine um we'll see who comes in next year yeah with everyone going gt3 spec their gt pro is just dying yes I once, think that's okay. once imsa got rid of gtlm gt pro was doomed it was it for sure was and i think that that's okay because we'll have a good healthy class next year of mm-hmm. gt3 cars that anybody can enter in theory yep so let's talk about the top class okay uh what did they call it in the wec hypercar hypercar hy hypercar this event had an alpine it Did. had a toyota yep and uh, two toyotas and two peugeots uh y- yes i'm pretty sure it had two peugeots uh, in en francais this is peugeot we're talking about it had de peugeot yes sorry okay uh, there were no come, Lexuses, when you come you come correct <laughs> jeez louise <laughs> uh overall i think that it was fairly boring to watch up front yeah it was uh, toyota's taken away with the season yes toyota took the win uh peugeot had mechanical bits go wrong which mm-hmm. to be expected well one of the peugeots really did yes and then i don't think alpine was on pace not enough to catch toyota that's affirmative yeah so Stay firm that means that toyota did get their almost season sweep i don't think they quite won every race Uh, i don't think they got every one of them but because sebring what we saw alpine won Mm -hmm. so we know that they didn't win every one of them Uh, but they won the championship they won this race whoop de doo congrats get ready for next year get ready it's gonna get hard very hard very fast oh yeah baby and that's what i'm pumped for yes real quick on quick note on gte am because there are two gt classes we can't forget about them uh, first place GT Am at Bahrain went to a Porsche driven by Matteo Caroli, Michael Peterson, and Nicholas Lutweiler, uh, followed by another Porsche with PJ Hyatt, Gunnar Jeanette, and Ben Barnacote. Then you had the Iron Dames in the Ferrari, Rahel Frey, Michelle Gadding, and Sarah Bovey. And then you had the Seaman car, the Aston Martin Vantage AMR driven by Ben Keating, uh, Enrique Chavez, and Marco Sorensen. Perfect. Yeah, so that was Bahrain. Um, was great to watch. Uh, let me see. Who won GTM in terms of the season? Ah, that's who it was. The Seaman car won <laughs> for the entire season. TF Sport won in the Aston, uh, followed by another Aston, Northwest AMR, which we're actually looking at right now, followed by the Iron Dames was on the podium for the season championship. Dang. Yeah, that's cool. Then we had Proton Competition. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's the whack. That wraps up their season. Uh, and that means we won't see them until Sebring of next year. Where we're going to see uh, Porsche 963. We're going to see yes. the Toyota. We're going to see the Peugeot. We're going to see the Ferrari 499P. Am I forgetting one? Maybe the Van Wall by Collis? Possibly. Mm, uh, am I missing I someone? I think that's uh, as well as the Toyota... I think is that oh you put it? the Toyota and the Peugeot in there, yeah okay I think right. so. There's five in total. I think so. Five manufacturers. I believe that's correct. Oh, Alpine. Alpine's P2 now. Remember? That's right. That's right. Palti- Alpine's going from hypercar or LMH LMDH to LMP2. Yes. So that's the WEC, the WEC right. World Endurance Championship. Cool. Is there any other racing news? Well, a little bit. We are getting to the point where racing news will be harder to come by. Uh, but there is a little bit of a driver lineup news announced for that whole LMDH program we're talking about. We have right. been mentioning LMDH, right? The Lama Daytona hybrid, mm-hmm. or also known as the top class of racing, essentially, right? For IMSA and the WEC. So Porsche, the factory LMDH team, the Porsche Penske Motorsport, their like factory team, they've finally rounded out their entire lineup with a Corvette driver. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Who might that be? Nick Tandy. Okay. So this makes the news because Nick Tandy was a Porsche driver. That's right. Went to Corvette and is now coming back to Porsche. Interesting. 
Yeah, so apparently, throughout the years that Nick Tandy went to Corvette, he had still had his hand in the Porsche pockets. He had still been doing some Nürburgring races with Porsches, maybe some 24H races with a Porsche, that kind of stuff. So he wasn't just completely severed ties with Porsche. And he really wants to go fight for top-class racing again, and I can't think of a better place to do it. Yep, they'll have a good shot at it. Yeah. So Nick Tandy is uh, joining Frederick Makovecki to uh, round out the entire Porsche factory lineup. Do you think he still has a hand in a pocket of a Chevrolet? No. Really? I think he's done with Chevy. I think he... Okay. (laughs) I think he went to Chevy because he just wanted something to do. I don't blame him. I... Once the RSR went away, what was there to do? Who cared at that point? Yeah, that you find a small GT3 team, which wasn't really his MO. So no. He he wanted to go as big as he could. I think he just went to Corvette just because. I suspect he'll still have some contacts over there, but I suspect you're right. I don't think he'll be actively trying to go back to Corvette. Because no. they're... They're going to go, I mean, they already are in what, GTD, you know, GT Pro in yeah. IMSA, and yep. they will be in the slowest class in the WEC yep. next year, so. That ain't him. No. So, real quick, let me give you the entire uh, Porsche factory driver lineup over both IMSA and the WEC, and I'm not sure who all are driving IMSA and who all are driving WEC. So, Porsche Penske Motorsport. Their lineup is a bunch of studs. You've got Nick Tandy, Frederick Makovecki, Dane Cameron. Yep, that Dane really? Cameron. Yep. Felipe Nasser, Kevin Estra, Michael Christensen, Lawrence Vantor, Matthew Jaminet, Matt Campbell, and Andre Lauderer. Andre Lauderer. Wow. They've got a star-studded lineup. So there's some old Audi stuff in there. There's some Corvette stuff. There's yeah. some old Porsche stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Kind of all over the place, actually, that driver lineup. I think it's good for them. I think so, too. I think it brings a lot of different experience to the Porsche right. team. Dane Cameron, he was, what, BMW at one point, too? He's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So good stuff there. Hmm. Yeah. Excited to see that at Daytona at the Rolex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every day that goes by, I'm just getting more and more excited about GTP or LMDH or whatever we want to call it. The top class of racing next year. That, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Should be exciting. Yep. So, uh, moving on. We do have some races this weekend. Any idea what's coming up? I don't. Is the F1 race on this weekend? It is. Where is it at? Abu Dhabi. That's right. Yes, Abu Dhabi. Uh, F1 is finishing their season up this weekend. I believe that's what, the 20th? Let's see, today's the, yeah. So it should be the 20th this weekend, this Sunday. Uh, Prepare to watch some Formula 1. Let's see. Really, the only thing we care about in F1 right now is Perez and Leclerc. And I think a Constructors Championship between Mercedes and Ferrari? Yeah, the first loser in Constructor Championship. Yep. Right. Uh, so that's what we got to look forward to for F1. But if you if you fancy some two-wheel action, apparently there is the FIM Superbikes. Uh, they're racing the Australian round at Phillips Island Ooh, this weekend. That's a good track. Yes. That is a good track. Cool. Yeah. So that's all I got. You got anything else? I do not. All right. It's going to wrap us up for episode 138. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you are watching on YouTube, please do leave us a thumbs up and drop a comment on the video. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're there. And if you're listening on audio only, please leave us a five-star rating and review on your platform of choice, right? Your Apple and Spotify and all that. Don't forget, follow us on social. I know you're on social. We are too. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is weareauto.io, where you can go and check out some of your favorite past races. Seriously, go check it out. It's pretty awesome. So again, thanks so much. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.